privacy is all about what information gets out to the world. Who gets to see what things about which people? So that's also an issue that has, well, it's always certainly always been contentious, but it's getting even more contentious for a few reasons that I'm about to outline. So privacy before the electronic age, you know, I usually just say the web, because the web is kind of the, the big turning point in the history of information going out, from information going out through very specific publisher channels, magazines and newspapers and television, etc., to information going out from everybody to everybody all the time with these very large organizations like Google and Facebook and, uh, and Microsoft, etc. Um, so what what were the kind of the bulwarks or the firewalls or the, the guardians of the privacy of your information before the web came out? Well, curtains, <laughs> you know, blinds on the windows. In fact, I'm looking around here and there's blinds on those windows. I can't see what's going on in there. All I have to do is block your senses and you're blocked from knowing anything about me before electronics. Before electronics, there was nothing really I could do to know what went on behind the closed door. There was nothing I could do to hear a conversation that was out of my earshot. There was nothing that I could do to, to, um, to get at your information because your information was protected physically. There was, a, there was an air wall, we like to call it. Like if I take a, a computer and I block it from, from any network, there's an air wall between the computer and the network. What that means is there's no way of communication. There's no way of getting the information from place A to place B. Well, of course, that's all changed. In the past, when I destroyed something, for example, I had a contract and I wrote that contract on a piece of paper and you signed it and I signed it and then I burned it, gone. No contract because it's now gone. It's, it's, it's destroyed is destroyed. And it was very easy to say things have been destroyed. When the library at Alexandria burned, boy, was a lot of information destroyed. Why? Because it was only there in that one place. Could not be copied, was not copied, and didn't exist anywhere except that one place. You burn the library at Alexandria, and then all of a sudden, poof, all that information's gone. That's the past. And in the past, also, because information was mainly sensory, a lot of the information that we knew about each other came from conversations with third parties. This idea of telephone that we talked about before, where person A tells person B, tells person C, tells person D, and then, you know, by the time it gets to E and F, the story is completely distorted. It's not, a, it's not at all like what actually happened. So in the past, a lot of information that we had about each other was what you call hearsay. I heard it, and then I said it. And we all know that that's untrustworthy. It's, it's always been known that that's untrustworthy. And so um, hearsay, for example, in courts is not admitted. You can't convict somebody of a crime because you heard somebody else talking about the fact that they did that crime, right? It's just, it's not, it's not okay. It's not, um, it's not able. So you're, it's not, it's not a valid way of, um, of, uh, it's not valid. Now, that's the old world where you could hide stuff really easily. You could destroy stuff really easily. And a lot of what we knew about each other came through third parties. So there wasn't really, you know, there wasn't much you could trust about it. And you could always, you could always say, well, that person has a, an agenda. All right, now what's the, what's the new world? In the new world, curtains don't count, right? We have, we are, we're able to see inside of all sorts of things. There's all sorts of ways of getting at information that is um, physically hidden because it's electronic and it moves through wires and, and destroyed is not destroyed. There's always a copy of stuff somewhere. We've talked about this before. Copies keep Copies are very persistent. Copies keep cropping up. There's no way to know that all the, all, the, all the copies of the information that you once created are destroyed. So these things are all gone. Hearsay has been replaced by copying. You know, we've talked about this idea of repeating in a conversation where you literally repeat what somebody else said, and it's a, it's a high fidelity. It's a complete and, and, and uh, good copy of what was already there, and so it's not hearsay anymore. It's actually what they said. You can go and get the cell phone video of some, of some policeman beating someone else up. It's not that I saw a policeman beating somebody up. There it is. You can see it for yourself. So those old methods are sort of blown away in this electronic environment. So what replaces them as the safeguards, as the, as the ways that private information stays private? Well, first of all, your, dis your desire to disclose that information is, is bulwark number one. If you never put that information down in any tangible form, then it can't move around, it can't be copied, there's nothing to destroy, and, um, and, and that information is safe. Information about myself that I keep in my head and never put into my computer is safe. Um, the user agreement, and now we're going to get more particularly specifically into the, into the Google, and, and I'll talk also about Facebook realm. 
what's your contract with the people to whom you're giving the information and what safeguards are there in that contract. We're going to talk about all these in a little bit more detail. Then the ethics of the holder of your information. That's about trust. Do I trust Facebook? Do I trust Google to hold on to my information and not make ill use of it that I would not support? That's a matter of trust. And then finally, um, the strength or weakness of the aggregation tools. Keeping my information private to a large extent is about making sure that no one can link ID1 with ID2 and put the picture together, put all the puzzle pieces together about who I am or what I'm doing. Okay, so let's talk about each, more, each of these in a little bit more detail.